Now, the screen behind me, well, that is a clue because we knew dinosaurs were wiped out by an asteroid strike 66 million years ago, but we didn't know the same strike sparked an explosion of this lot, frogs. Well, a new study appears to contradict earlier theories about the origin and spread of these little creatures. It's fascinating work and research that's been done here in the studio. It's our health and science correspondent, Helen Briggs, to tell us more. And uh, Helen, tell us more then about what they found in this study. Well, it's a tale of survival, how these amazing creatures came to be everywhere. We now know they're up trees, they're in ponds, um, on land, and remarkable things. They can camouflage themselves, produce poison on their skins. That wasn't always the case. They were very lucky. They're an animal that was there at the right place at the right time way back then when that asteroid struck 66 million years ago. So tell me in a little more detail, why would that moment when there was that asteroid strike, why would that trigger just an explosion of different populations of frogs. Why would that happen? Well, it's, it's hard to work out, isn't it? There's this impact, firestorm, and this global winter, so most animals on land were wiped out, including, of course, uh, the dinosaurs. Um, they think frogs survive perhaps because they could burrow, they could stay underground, um, but whenever there's an extinction, you find that animals, some animals can survive. So it seems that frogs could burrow, and, and then they were able to just emerge and spread and take advantage of the fact there weren't too many animals there. They went up into the trees as well, so they could occupy that habitat. So they owe their success to, to this terrible event. So those guys disappeared, the dinosaurs, and the frogs just proliferated. I mean, it's interesting because... This actually contradicts what we, we previously thought, doesn't it? It does, yes. Yeah. So we know that they've been around about 200 million years, but um, this research shows they're actually, in terms of their sort of mass um, diversity, they're, they're a little bit younger than we think. So we thought they went back before that and had nothing to do at all with this asteroid strike. Um, but some more research, some more data came up with a completely different answer. You talk about data. I mean, uh, tell me a little more about how they actually found this out, because there's always been a shortage of the data that you're talking about. So, so how did they come to these conclusions? Well, they looked at DNA from living frogs from 44 different families of frogs, so masses of data. They took nuclear DNA in the past. They've used mitochondrial DNA, so this came up with a, a bit of a more reliable answer. Um, and they looked at this massive genetic family tree and then compared it with fossils. So that's when these, this link with the asteroid impact emerged and scientists were very surprised to find that. So how close, just a twin thought at the end, how close are the frog populations we see now to the ones back then? And the research also is fascinating because it talks, doesn't it, about how they spread around the world. That's right. So back then the world was a very different place. Uh, so the land masses were joined as supercontinents so it seems that some of the frogs took advantage of this to move around so antarctica they used as a bit of a stepping stone there was no ice there so they could sort of hop well not literally from south america to australia um, and this remarkable survival story the sad thing is though is that they're now many of them under threat all right helen thanks for taking us through all of that frogs versus dinosaurs the frogs we're now to, Now, do stay with us because here on the programme in the next few minutes, we have the latest, as promised, on Narendra Modi's visit to Israel, the first visit to the country by an Indian Prime Minister. Defence and military contracts are likely to dominate. India is now Israel's biggest arms market, buying weapons on an average of a billion dollars a year. That story here in more detail in a moment or two. Don't go away.